Coming up on today's Locked On Senators, it's game day. I say that for the final time of the season. The Senators are in Buffalo to take on the Sabres. And we have our favorite guest back on the show. It's Mark Mathot. We talk to him about, does he like the idea of play-ins for the NHL? We talk about Derek Brassard and Craig Anderson. Couple former teammates and which hashtag sends abroad is Meth cheering for to win the Stanley Cup. That's all coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Senators podcast. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Locked On Senators podcast. I'm Tim Stützle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators podcast. Welcome inside episode 777 of the Locked On Senators podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains, please like and subscribe wherever you download your podcasts, including on YouTube, where we want you to leave a comment below today's comment. What do you want to see in the season finale for the Ottawa Senators? Read those below. We'll get to them maybe on the postcast, which we will do after tonight's game. Today is Thursday, April 13th. And Pilsy, what's your answer? What would you like to see from the Senators tonight? Well, a W is first and foremost. It'd just be nice to end the season off with a nice win here. But I'm going to hop on the bandwagon with most people's answers in the replies there, Ross. And that's Tim Stutzla to get two goals tonight. Not only will that help him hit 40 points, but or that will help him hit 40 goals, rather. But he's sitting at a dash two right now. Wouldn't it be nice just to even that out for the end of the season? I think that'd be a good little way to finish things off. It would be a big plus to end the season. <laughs> yes. That way. I'm going to go with the forklift guy, 604 on Twitter. Win or lose, I want to see everyone on the Senators line up and shake Craig Anderson's hand at the end of the game. You know how you see that with refs when they're retiring, they go by. We're not sure if Craig Anderson is retiring or not, but he will be the Sabres goalie tonight. What a poetic way it would be to go out. We'll talk about Anderson and his off-ice habits and everything with Meth a little bit later on in the show, but... I think that would be a really cool moment at the end of the season. Anderson obviously has dominated the Senators, although the Sens did win their last meeting against Craig Anderson. But uh, a sign of respect for the greatest goalie in Senators history would be would be a nice way for this game to end. But I'm with you. And look, there's no playoff implications. We can't sit here and lie to you about that. But what I can tell you with certainty is a regulation win would finish Ottawa ahead of Buffalo in the standings. Now that seems like... Guy, verbal meme, the guy who's in third place popping champagne bottles. But before the season, you and I agreed, Pilsy, finish ahead of Detroit, finish ahead of Buffalo. Game 82, they have an opportunity to do that. Uh, the only thing, though, Ross, is the Buffalo Sabres have two games left here. So if the Sens win tonight, yes, that would tie them. But the Buffalo Sabres have one more game there. So it would be interesting to see how that goes. But you're not a math guy. It's okay. It's against Columbus, too, tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> damn. And Columbus is going to be going hard to lose that game. Well, all, all these tanking teams have been winning. Like Chicago last week against Pittsburgh. Can we have a moment of silence? Can we have a moment of silence for the Pittsburgh Penguins? <laughs> Woo! The Penguins are out. That's what we wanted to see uh, going into the season. And... I know there's plenty of factors. Probably that loss to Chicago was the final nail in their coffin. But guys, choose to believe that it was Dylan Ferguson's heroics in his first NHL start that kept the Pittsburgh Penguins out of the playoffs for the first time in 16 years. Dominic Hasek and Zidane Ochara were Ottawa Senators the last time that the Penguins didn't make the playoffs. Yeah, that's crazy, Ross. I can just picture it now. Crosby, 15 years down the road in in his study in like a, a leather chair with uh, mahogany walls and leather-bound books being like, damn, remember 2023? That damn Dylan Ferguson. He ruined it. He ruined more it for like all that, of us. More like that damn Tristan Jari couldn't stop a beach ball all year. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. Oh, well, that's enough about the Penguins, although it is fun to prey on their downfall. We posted that uh, the guy verbal meme or the verbal uh, 
photo there where or verbal meme where the guy is standing at uh, his biggest haters funeral just dressed to the nines just very happy that was us. i was between that or tweeting out an open coffin and saying get in at penguins <laughs> <laughs> and i decided to go with the former nice i'm sure you could have found some sort of violent uh penguin national geographic video too if you really wanted to go that route no, no, we're not going to go there. We're not going to go there. But we will get back to the Ottawa Senators game tonight. Game day preview right now because Matt will carry us through the rest of the show as he's done 10 times this year. Yep. Absolute beauty. Legend. We had some people write in after the first time when we're like, hey, Meth is, we've signed Meth to a free agent contract for free 99. Absolute beauty. People are like, oh, he, they just said that. Oh, he's going to come on. Who, who who else has he gone on other than TSN? We absolutely love having him as a part of our show. Such a beauty, such a great guy, and, and it yeah. will continue. He's already texted us right after the show and said, so, boys, locker clean out day. I'm coming back, right? Monday yeah. or Tuesday, Mark Mathot will be back on Locked On Senders. He's not going anywhere all summer long. Great conversation coming up with him. But, Pilsy, where do you want to start? Your Ottawa Senators or the Buffalo Sabres? Let's, let's get the Sabres out of the way here and uh, clean that up quick. Yeah, losers. Hey, Pills, is that what we call these guys in Buffalo? Uh, Ross is missing the playoffs 12 years in a row to hold the record for the longest playoff drought currently in the NHL. Losers? Yeah, I'd say so. Now, Buffalo Sabres fans may be quick to say, well, who's in second place there? But no, no one cares about that. 12 years of no playoffs what an embarrassing city what an embarrassing team and an embarrassing franchise the only reason why it's good that the senators and sabers aren't fighting for that final wild card spot is because you and i made the peculiar statement that we would go to buffalo for this game yes thank god i don't have to go to buffalo although the wings are great i will say um and the third period of the world junior game at the stadium was fun too but you talk about a loser franchise Jeff Skinner played his 931st NHL game and has never played in the playoffs. I think we mentioned that on yesterday's show. Fits right in. Absolute banana lands. But he's on the top line, left wing, alongside Casey Middlestat and Alex Tuck. The second line is Dylan Cousins between Jordan Greenway and Tage Thompson. Don't ask me why Tage Thompson is off the first line and not playing center. He's the leading scorer on the team. 93 points in 77 games. Ain't our decision. Third line, Tyson Yost with J.J. Paterka and Jack Quinn, Ottawa Valley boy. And the fourth line, Peyton Krebs between Zemgus Gergensens and Kyle Ocposo. On defense, Rasmus Dahlin and Matias Samuelson. Owen Power with Henry Yoki Haru. And Riley Stillman is with Ilya Labushkin. Craig Anderson starts in goal. The Sabres are 7-2-1 in their last 10 games. They have a 40-33-7 record on the season. Pilsy, who is your lookout player for tonight's game? My lookout player for tonight's game is going to be Owen Power. Um, I mean, the the comparables and comparisons, Owen Power, Jake Sanderson, there's a lot of them. And I think it's going to be interesting to see how these two match up in their early years in the NHL because this is going to be a storyline we can follow for a long time moving forward here. And sure, Owen Power's got the size, and that makes it very uh, uh, kind of enticing to lean towards Owen Power. But Sens fans know what Jake Sanderson can do. And I feel like if you're not a Sens fan, maybe you're underestimating the skill of Jake Sanderson. But we know what this guy can bring. So I'm going to be watching Owen Power to kind of keep making those comparisons and see how they line up here. You stole mine because Owen Power is the lookout player to watch for tonight's game. He's having a fantastic season. And that's what I hate about these debates when you're getting into it online, whether it's with Scott Wheeler or anybody else. It's like you don't want to make it sound like you're shitting on the other player because they're both great and hell when he puts on the maple leaf which he's bound to do over the years we're gonna be the biggest owen power super fan going right he's a great player he's six foot six 220 pounds and he's 20 years old right there's a plenty of runway for this guy to just be one of the best defensemen in the league 35 points in 77 games for power he's playing almost 24 minutes a night he's a stud but so is Jake Sanderson. So it's just more about them being talked about in the same vein. It's the yep. same type of player. And they both have a, a 1A defenseman that they're able to kind of lean on as well. Rasmus Dahlin. Like, that'll be my lookout player as I kind of pivot here. Like, Rasmus Dahlin should be getting Norris votes this year. Is that crazy to say? 
I don't think it's that crazy, Ross. The the only thing that makes it crazy is there's so many good players that uh, it's hard to narrow it down to to one guy or even three guys, honestly, with the way the defensemen have played this year. Well, two of them I'm calling now. It's Eric Carlson and Adam Fox. So it's 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 pick your guy. Whether Josh it's- Morrissey doesn't get in there for you. No, second half, everybody on the Jets offensively kind of slowed down. He's yeah. he's in the mix. I was going to say, pick your poison in, in terms of that third guy that you want to have in there, whether it's Rasmus Dahlin, whether it's uh, Dougie Hamilton, whether it's Josh Morrissey, Miro Haskinen yeah. should yeah. get some love. Hell, Quinn uses 66 assists this year. Like, only Eric Carlson has more among defense. Crazy. So, uh, and he's playing on, on not the most offensive-minded team, although – Elias Patterson did just hit 100 points. Boys at Locked On Canucks, I'm sure, fired up about that. But, yeah, you're right. So many great players to choose from. But to me, like, Rasmus Dahlin has to be up there in the mix. I like that he plays with an edge, too. Hey, I'd even yeah. mention Brandon Montour should get some love for the Norris. Like, we saw that firsthand. Mm-hmm. This guy's got 73 points, 79 games. But with Dahlin, 72 and 76, he's almost got 100 penalty minutes as well. 40 of his points have come at even strength which is putting him right up there, sixth right behind some other really well-known players uh, on that list as well. I, I just love the way he plays. It took him a while, and this is a, a a word of caution to guys who have gotten rid of defensemen too early. Vince Dunn, uh, among others, right? Like You need to give them the space to grow, and being a first overall pick, there was plenty of really high expectations of Dahlien as an 18-year-old, but now you're starting to see him grow into that at age 24, where – Sorry, 22, 23. Like, he's the same draft as Brady Kachuk. But, my God, like, that kid is an absolute stud. So, And he plays to the edge. I mentioned the penalty mints, but he's not afraid. Remember the Josh Norris one? Yeah. What did he do to him? He snowed him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then he had the moment where him and Matthews were having the cross-check battle in front, and he just went, boom, right in the face. Like, he's, he's got an edge to him. So, that, that Sabres blue line, if there's, if there's a part of their team where you're set going forward, helps having f- two first overall picks yeah but, man, they, they've got some studs on the back end for sure yeah and uh ross we'd be remiss to say that i i think i speak for both of us our honorable mention lookout player is craig anderson oh for sure for sure for sure uh craig anderson i hope he makes 40 saves on 45 shots tonight Nice. I like it. (laughs) Now, who will be those players scoring or shooting, I should say, on Craig Anderson? The Ottawa Senators lineup is as follows. Tim Stutzla between Brady Kachuk and Claude Giroux. Shane Pinto between Alex Dabrinkit and Drake Batherson. Mark Kastlick between Matthew Joseph and Patrick Brown. And then Dylan Gambrell will center Igor Sokolov and Julian Gauthier. On defense, it's Sanderson Zub. It's Branstrom Holden and Tyler Clevin is paired with Max Gannett, who will do his rookie lap in the same building that Jake Sanderson did his rookie lap in Game 1 of this season. Game 1, Game 82, both in Buffalo. This time, it's Mad Sogard in goal. 8-6-2 on the season, a 329 goals against average, and an 889 save percentage. Bilzy, you're locked on player. I'm going to be locked on to Max Gannett in this one. First NHL game, uh, as I predicted, he's going to be paired with Tyler Clevin. And I I just want to see what this kid can do at the NHL level, especially with, like I mentioned, Clevin's going to be leaning on uh, Gannett to kind of be the puck carrier in this one, or at least I assume so. So it's going to be very interesting to see how he holds up up against NHL talent because Gannett, you got to appreciate how good of a season he's had down there in Belleville, especially with kind of all the rotating uh, roster spots that that team has had to go through a new coach uh, midway through the year. So I've got a lot of respect for the kid and I hope he has a nice game today. And uh, Ross, uh, I don't know if he caught his uh, presser when he spoke with the media, but it just seems like he's yet another Ottawa Senators draft pick where this kid's got a good head on his shoulder. He talks about, Hey, I'm a lower draft pick. I don't have to worry about all these big expectations. I know what my game is, and I'm going to come in here and do my best. So I, I, I like this Gannett kid, so I want to see him do well in his first NHL game. Tyler Clevin played 13 minutes and 15 seconds in his first NHL game. What are you expecting that to look like for Max Gannett? I'm pulling up right now. Uh, Jake Sanderson played 22-21 in his yeah. first NHL game. I'd be uh, right around that mark, Ross. I'd say around the third, yeah, uh, thirteen, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not Sanderson. Uh, the thirteen-minute mark for Gannett probably makes sense there. I wouldn't be surprised if we see him on the second power play either. Yeah, I might be a little surprised, but maybe he gets in the mix depending on how it goes. And you just want to get a look at him here, so uh, it's possible. 
the other milestone that we're going to be tracking tonight, Pilsy mentioned Tim Stutzla. Claude Giroux, if he scores again, that's a career high in goals in his entire career. Claude Giroux. Insane. Wow. And congratulations, Claude Giroux. 1100th NHL game tonight. Awesome. Nice. Love to see that. 1100th NHL game. So Claude Giroux is my locked on player. But I also am looking at Tyler Clevin right now because you mentioned Max Kinnett. This guy's Corsi percentage is 64 in his first seven games. He's taken zero penalties. Yeah. Like, this is about as good of a start to a career as Tyler Clevin could have hoped. Seven games, two assists. Perfect. Especially, Ross, when you contrast it with what uh, what all the online scout, scouts thought he was. Just a big, mean defenseman that's not going to be able to move the puck, can't skate, his advanced analytics are going to be terrible. Do not draft this kid. Yeah, forget that. And poor discipline was a, a, a thing that people mentioned, even just the way he was hitting in college. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tonight we might get the first K train hit. I, I just have, I'd just, like to see that. Know, yeah, I just have a feeling that the, the radar is going to go off and he's going to fly. Okay, we are running way long. It's the final game day of the season, though. I'm going to keep going long because Pilsy, Fred at five for biting has <laughs> given us. I like the, that the gift of a lifetime here. He's done all the work needed. The chain and goggle chart. Nice. Going into tonight. Respect, Fred. Respect. Alex Dabrinkit and Cam Talbot are tied at first with three goggle wins each. Mad Sogard has two. Austin Watson, Brady Kachuk, Jake Lucchini. Jake Lucchini has two? No, that can't be. It's Maybe possible. His first game and then his first goal? Yeah. Yep. Interesting. And Claude Giroux has two, and he's got them right now. So, Interesting to note here. I uh, should finish that off, though. Uh, Giroux and Batherson also have two. Everyone else has one except for the few that don't have it. Pinto and Zub without them this year of the regulars. So maybe one of them gets it, but we also know it's probably going to Max Gannett if they do win. Yeah, I, I would assume that. And I think it's safe to say Cam Talbot will not be getting the goggles tonight. Thank you very much for Fred for doing that for us. Really appreciate that. Coming up, Mark Mathot will carry us out here. Over a half hour with him. Lots of great insight, as always. We appreciate Meth for being a part of the show. Hey, go tweet at Meth. Go thank him for all of the content that he's given us this season. He's done it out of the kindness of his heart. So please tweet at Mark Mathot. Say thank you for going on Locked On Senators. We love you. We'd like to continue it throughout the offseason. It really has been a huge help, huge bonus to us throughout the year. So please do us a favor and go thank Mark Mathot. All right, that's coming up next. You are listening to Locked On Senators. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Built Bar. The one thing about protein bars is typically they don't taste that good. And you, you're not really excited to have one. You're like, well, this is good for me. I'll just get it down. Not Built Bar. They are the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. They find out how to make their bars taste good and then figure out how to make them healthy. All you got to do to realize that is go to built.com and check out all the flavors. Ross, I am stoked for this flavor. Pillsy's pick of the day is cookies and cream puff. So you get the built puff, which is a marshmallow wrapped in chocolate. Sounds like a candy bar, but it's a protein infused marshmallow. So this bar is going to be High in protein, 17 grams is that good. Low in calories, only 140. And also, it's going to taste amazing. I can't wait to get my hands on cookies and cream built cookies and cream built bar puffs. And you can too. Just go to the built.com website. Get a mix box too. I love all their different flavors. And you can try them for yourself. And when you do that, use our promo code LOCKEDON15 to get 15% off. Your next order, go to built.com. Use promo code locked on 15 for 15% off your next order. It's Built Bar, the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. Today's episode is also brought to you by the Glebe Central Pub. Go check the Glebe Central Pub out at 779 Bank Street. It's right in the heart of the Glebe, right on Bank Street. You can't miss it. And you can't have a bad time there either. Whether you want to go throw some darts, you want to go listen to live music, you want to just go and have a bite to eat. You can do that all at the Glebe Central Pub. The Glebe Central Pub also wants to thank you for using their Send Shuttle all season long. The Send Shuttle will be back next year. So remember, leave your keys at home, bring the good times, 
to the Glebe Central Pub and take the Send Shuttle for almost every single home game. Next year, they might even have every single home game. Who knows? It's been a smashing success. So go thank the Glebe Central Pub for us as well. I know Tom B. just started working there. A YouTube commenter said, hey, I'm working at the Glebe Central Pub now. Just nice. people together. So go say hi to Tom. Say hi to everybody at the Glebe Central Pub. Blair, all the great servers and kitchen staff that work there, and all the live musicians, all the comedians. They've got open mic nights. They've got everything at the Glebe Central Pub. So go check them out. It's the Glebe Central Pub. We love our friends over at the Glebe Central Pub. Go see them at 779 Bank Street and let them know that Locked On Senators sent you. All right, here is best friend of the show. It's Mark Mathot. All right, we now welcome back a very good friend of the show, a veteran of 38 Stanley Cup playoff games, 604 in his National Hockey League career. So add that all up, and it adds to number three. Mark Mathot joins us. Math, what's going on, brother? Welcome back. Good to be back. It's been a while, boys. I think uh, we've had a lot of conflicts between this episode and the last that I joined on for between me basically having a cold for two months. And I'm under, it's my understanding now, uh, through our, my, my doctor, apparently a lot of people have been battling this just weird cold symptoms that just don't want to relent. Anyway, I'm good. I'm happy to be back now. Kids are busy with hockey still. Uh, things are good. And the weather's nice. It's supposed to be 28 degrees here in Ottawa today. Sick brag. Yeah. I plus yeah. 18 here, plus 18 here. We're no slouches. The snow I'll take dry. 18 over 28. Hey, you know what? That's actually a good point. Um, Meth, is this the best time of year to be a hockey fan, player, media, or what? It is when you're when you're in the mix. Now, it's still exciting as far as like you know being in Ottawa. And I know it's not all doom and gloom because I do believe that they take they've taken a step forward. I won't get into that. We talk about it all the time, but um, exciting in that you get to see a l- nice long press conference after the last game. Really dig into the coach's mind as far as you know what he believes to be, you know, coming up next for next season, assuming he's here, of course. And I mean, that's, that's up for debate. Uh, and I know the fan base is pretty split on it, but just hearing from, from DJ, from Pierre, uh, from the, the leadership core guys like Brady get their assessment and what their predictions are not predictions, but what they rather would like to see going into next year. I'm, I'm just, I'm down with that. Uh, but I had this discussion with a dad this morning in Canada. I took my kid to, to, to hockey at eight o'clock in the morning and we were sitting in the stands and I said, it's just a shame because this time of year is so exciting. If you are still in the mix and you have the postseason to look forward to the weather's warm, it's fun to go to the rink. The games matter that much more now all of a sudden. And you guys know when you watch that first round of the year, the Stanley Cup playoffs, there's nothing like it every night. There's a battle on TV and it's so exciting. It doesn't matter if you're not a fan of those teams, the, the brand is, is terrific. So um, I'm just, I guess you guys could tell I'm fired up here. I'm just excited for Ottawa to finally be in that conversation. Yeah. I've always said it. Round one is my favorite. Like when you get so many battles, 100%. it's constant every night. Yeah. Round one is the best. Uh, now Matt, I wanted to ask you, so for the teams that don't make the playoffs, unfortunately, your Ottawa senators did not make the cut this year, closer, closer than they have been in a while though. So you're on an uptick here, but what's that like? Uh, cleaning out the locker the next day uh, is it kind of a bittersweet moment like a part of you is like okay I can relax as a grind of an 82 game season but then part of you is also like damn I wish we could keep going here like what's, what's that feeling like it's both it's both because yes players are you, you mean you guys know players are so competitive they want to win but the moment it is over and you do go in the next day it's like a weight's just lifted off your shoulders right I mean um, did you achieve the goal that you wanted Probably not. Most of them will be a little disappointed, uh, certainly prior to the meetings that you'll have, because every player, when they go in the next day, there's a meeting with the head coach and or, you know, the four, it could be the D coach, the forward coach, definitely with DJ. And then you'll have a meeting with Pierre Dorian, with your general manager um, in no particular order. But when you do show up the next day, there's a big board. You fill in your name on a schedule that's on a small sheet. You, you find a time slot that works for you and you go with that. But um, yeah, it's, it's bittersweet because you've got your exit physicals. There's a couple doctors there. You have to sign out on the year claiming that you finished the season healthy, obviously for liability reasons with the team and whatnot. But, um, I think if you're, if you're one of those core players though, if you're Brady Kachuk, you're probably pissed off. You know, you're not going to be going in there all that happy because all those guys, they've got their breadcrumbs now, right? They've got their contract sorted. They've got their money. They've got their security. 
all they care about now at that point is winning. And that's the beauty in signing a lot of these players to long-term deals. There's a mentality thing, right? Like mentally, all of a sudden, all those selfish me, me, me things that happen throughout the season, your stats, your ice time, that goes out the window because you know you're set for the next couple seasons. All you're focused on is winning games. So some of those guys certainly will be disappointed. Um, it's more the the bubble players. You know, and I could speak to that when I was just breaking into the league. Obviously, I wanted to win, but number one was my career. I mean, more than anything, my first major concern was getting a long-term deal, making sure that I was secure, and then your focus shifts completely towards the team. And that's just the reality of it. It's human nature, right? So, um, you know, it's 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 a tough couple days, but as I mentioned, you get to go out with the boys, one last big team party. That's always a shit show. Um, you know, often affects the meetings. You know, you're dragging guys out of their bedrooms to get to that meeting. Yeah. Every year it happens. There's always someone that just sleeps in and they show up to the rink looking like a bag of shit. <laughs> and you got to sober them up as much as you can and throw them into that room with DJ or Pierre. But anyway, um, you know, it's just, that's, that's, it's, it's a, it's a great way. Uh, it's a great motivator rather going through this now. Hopefully they'll have their, you know, their eye on the prize in, in October next year. Where was the end of the year party after your 2017 run with the squad? Oh, oh God. Well, I think every year, at least in my, in my time with Ottawa, we always had it at the heart and crown. Uh, good, good friend of mine, uh, the Bradley family, they own the heart and crown. I grew your up jersey's with Mike. up in there, isn't it? Yeah. There's a little section. There's a reason for that. And it's like, he was literally my best friend, uh, the son of the owner, my entire childhood at, uh, at school. So, and wow. he lived down the street, still know their phone number by heart and they wow. still live in the same house despite all that success. But, um, yeah, it's a, it's a great spot and it's big. It's sprawled out. And we typically would rent out the bottom, like the basement area, the snug pub at the back. Yep. And uh, we'd have our own little bartender down there. It was great. But, you know, guys are tired, though, too. So you mix in a little fatigue, excessive drinking, and things can get out of control pretty quickly. And you might end up seeing a player like Daniel Alfredson playing ping pong down the street <laughs> in the basement of the cabin. So there it goes. Hell yeah. And if you want to see Alfie, one of the best assists of his National Hockey League career, you can head over <laughs> on Twitter at Send Central, setting up Matt who goes bar up as it hit the post, crossbar, and down to beat Carey Price. Two of three of your Stanley Cup playoff goals game winners. Not a big deal there, including the one at home that we mentioned as well against the Rangers. Somebody mentioned Nick Holden had a bird's eye view of that one. Uh, right Saw that. <laughs> but uh, that that was awesome. Hey, talking about the playoffs, I want to get into this with you, and, and I'll explain it first because the NBA has changed things up dramatically. We are going to get into some more Sens conversation on the other side, but I'm, I'm a huge fan of this play-in. I thought I was going to hate it, where instead of eight teams making the playoffs, now six teams make the playoffs and get this seven versus eight plays one game. Okay. Whoever finishes seventh plays eight in the, the home arena of the seventh seed winner gets the seventh seed, but the eighth seed the or the loser gets to play another chance. However, the, the loser of the nine, 10 matchup is out. The winner has to play again. That's how you get the advantage for the two teams okay. who are above like, you're getting two or three extra must win games. You're getting revenue from those. And it's just amazing as a fan. Like, are you for or against it? I, I'm, I'm, I don't like being a fence sitter. I, I, I'd like to be firm on one side or the other. Um, the player in me doesn't like it. Um, yeah. I don't like the idea of having to play more games. And I, I, I worry that it diminishes to a degree, not completely, but it diminishes all the work you put in to the regular season from a fan's perspective, absolutely. I mean, anytime you add more meaningful hockey games, uh, you're glued to the television, uh, and that's just more money. So I don't like the idea that a potential 10th seed could upset one of your top teams at some point. They have to right? win twice, though, just to get in. I know, but but hockey is such a fucking unpredictable sport um, that... Uh, I, and I guess the argument, the counter argument to that is you don't want certainty. I like the idea that something wild can happen, yeah. but wouldn't, the, and forgive me, cause I, I'm still have a hard time understanding all this. Wouldn't your, wouldn't your 10th seed potentially play one of the top seeds if they do move forward? So if the 10th seed were to even make the playoffs, they would have to yeah. beat the ninth seed on the road and then beat the loser of the other play in game on the road. Holy fuck. Right? And then so, even if they win that, then now they're up against the top seed after, right? 
Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So let's let's fast forward to the the best case scenario for that tenth seed, and then somehow they beat out your your number one seed. I, I don't know. I guess I'm thinking. You know, these are hypotheticals, and 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 you know, it's fun to talk about it. I'm just thinking that the worst case scenario I think outweighs any of the benefits. But from a fan's perspective, again, I'll mention it one last time. I understand it. I as a player, I don't know if the PA would 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 agree to this. It would depend on it would depend on the playoffs and you'd have to incentivize it. Like you'd have to either up the ante as far as playoff bonuses go because you guys all know in the NHL you don't you play for free in the postseason for the most part, right? You're not really making much money. So it's you're playing for pride, for the love of the game, yada yada yada. So if you could somehow incentivize it, sure. But I don't know I don't know that the PA would would agree to it. Yeah, I, it would have to be a whole kind of restructuring of the CBA, right? Because yes. you've got uh, insurance liabilities, you've got extra revenue coming in, who gets what percentage of that, and exactly. uh, TV deals uh, come in. Like, it, it would be a big deal. And I think it works in the NBA because these guys take 20 games off for load management season anyways, whereas Bingo. in hockey, that doesn't really happen. And it's so and, and, much and- more likely that you're going to get hurt. And Pilsy, you nailed it right there. And the NBA, the NBA is physical. Like it's a physical game. Yeah. I played basketball in high school. I, I played all my whole childhood. Like I get it, but you don't. You, the injury rate is not even. I well, I shouldn't say that because I don't have the numbers in front of me. But I can't imagine the injuries are nearly as serious as the ones that you'd see in hockey. Right, a contact sport played at high speeds. You know. Anyway, I, I in theory, idea sounds great. I just don't know. And you nailed it right there. I like that you mentioned about the restructuring of the CBA. Logistically speaking, I think it's a huge headache, but I'm all for improving the game. I'm not some old head that just believes in the old traditional style. I do understand that the game has to evolve. I just don't know unless you incentivize it for the players, how they'll sign off on it. Yeah, that's fair. I like that perspective, right? Because for me, it's just fan, fan, fan. It's like, give me as many meaningful games as possible and and we'll go from there. Hey, how how about a couple extra playoff games, right? You can use that in contract negotiations because they're counting you it. could. Playoff stats, but no, I, I see where you're coming from as well. And and it is a hard road if you're the 10th seed, but it would just make for that much better of a Cinderella story. Now, I want to turn the attention here after a quick word from game time, and that's to Craig Anderson as well, who will start tonight. He's in the starters end. Sabres, Senators, Legend, your former teammate. He hasn't made any decisions, but I need a Craig Anderson story out of you about just what kind of guy he is. After a quick word, you're listening to Locked On Senators. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. It is the ultimate spot to pick up last minute tickets. If you're trying to get a ticket to a play-in game, maybe a playoff game, Toronto Blue Jays are in full swing. Hopefully the roof's open, the weather's nice, and you're thinking, hey, I might want to head down to the ballpark. Well, you can do that easily with Game Time with killer deals on last minute tickets and best price guaranteed. It's the place for last minute tickets. Forget planning months in ahead. Just go to the game today. You get exclusive flash deals for tickets on football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, or whatever you want, they can find it for you. Game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. And if you find tickets in the same spot, game time will credit you 110% difference if a competitor has a better option. And you get images of your seats before you go. So you know exactly where you're sitting and what the view is going to look like. Tickets can be bought in a matter of seconds. Just two taps, one, two, and you've got your tickets. Tickets are sent directly to your phone, so you don't have to print anything out or dig through emails, nothing like that. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use our promo code Locked On NHL for twenty bucks off your first purchase. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On NHL for twenty bucks off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right. Welcome back to Locked On Senators. I love having game time on the show. It's such a great ticketing app. Math, what's the last sporting event you went to as a fan? I know you've been at the as as a TSN employee, but as a fan, like any sport. Nice. Yeah, that's a great question. Probably. I I don't think I've been to an event. God, I hope I'm not wrong here, but probably not since I've been in Dallas. Went to uh we went to a couple NBA games. Nice. But I mean, the Mavs, other than that, I, I, I'm not a big baseball fan. I mean, I, 
I can be convinced to go if there's a big group of guys and we're having beers and enjoying yeah. ourselves. It's more an event but, than it is about the game yeah, for baseball. I find yeah. it painfully boring, and that's just the way <laughs> I am. Um, yeah, that's fine. But uh, yeah, no, I, I I haven't really gone anywhere. I mean, I think being on the heels of COVID and all that stuff too, it's just kind of put a put a, a hamper on it. But I mean, I'd like to get out. It's just different now. Now that I'm working all these games and with young kids, it's just hard. I haven't really had the time. Yeah, well, hey, that's a great family trip once they get a, uh, a little bit older, sure. right? Head down to the ballpark in, in Toronto, have a couple pops and, and a great- Yeah, agreed. Set. And if he were- you know, meth would use game time. All right. Now let's get to, uh, I, I need, I'm just shocked that Craig Anderson's still in the league. I mean, this guy was, yeah. was an Ottawa Senator as a veteran presence brought in uh, meth. I would ask you this way. What would you have told rewind 10 years? And if someone told you that Brian Elliott and Craig Anderson would play against the Ottawa senators in 2023, like, what is it with these guys? They're, they're on age. Genetics. It's gotta be, I mean, you know, cause, cause Andy, Andy wasn't like your prototypical heart. Like, let me rephrase that. He was a machine on the ice. No question. He's, he's an incredible goaltender. He's a close friend of mine. It's certainly in hockey. Um, but he wasn't like a fitness freak by any means. He wasn't some guy in there trying to break records on the bench press or squat rack, very wiry. Um, and that seems to be, and this is just a theory. I've got no data to, to back it up, but a lot of these guys that seem to have longevity and durability, um, they're either kind of stringy, um, don't carry a ton of muscle and, or maybe they're a little on the burly side, but they carry more body fat, but the rip dudes, the guys that are like super strong shape that are incredible players when they're and effective, when they're healthy. But the flip side to that is you tend to get more injuries, right? You're more injury prone. I, I don't know. I'd have to bring on a strength and conditioning guy to back that up or an athletic yeah. therapist, but Andy, Andy's that guy, you know, he's a stringy guy. He's wiry, he's really lean, um, and he doesn't, you know, doesn't eat a ton. He's just kind of that guy that just shows up when he needs to be there. And on his off days, he's building computers and simulators, and uh, he's, he's a big race guy. He's got yep. this huge race simulator that I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about before. And he loves vehicles, loves cars. He's got a Ferrari. I remember him picking me up on in his Ferrari in in Florida after oh, practice. He brought I it to the break. Say, it was not in Ottawa. <laughs> No, no. But even, even in Florida where they don't have, you know, a gazillion potholes every 10 minutes, which that is not, that is not um, an indictment on the city. That's just the weather. And I'm, I'm assuming it's like that everywhere in Canada, but, uh, but in Florida, even in Florida, like that thing was so stiff. I remember sitting in the passenger seat and saying in, in my mind and going, this thing sucks. Like it's, <laughs> it's very, it was very minimalist. Uh, you know, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles that like a new probably no cup holders. Have. Yeah, well, yeah, it's just it's an older vehicle, right? And uh, but but the thing can roar, and it was ripping. And that guy is not shy to drive it. And we were in Fort Lauderdale, and he drove me around in it. But uh, yeah, a really good dude, and incredible that he's still playing. Same for Elliot. I mean, it's just those are anomalies. Um, I don't think anybody should take to heart what they suggest they did in order to achieve that longevity. I think it's sheer luck as well as good genetics. Nice. Yeah, I'm convinced uh, Andy is just going so he can fund his race uh, car <laughs> career post. I, I swear that's that's what he's doing in his mind. He's like, hey, a couple more games, I can get the new set of tires, and then and he's just thinking further and further there. Well, and, um, and, you're, and he's going to bank more money the longer he plays. The less like when I played, I wasn't bored. So you know, you're yeah. always focused. You're not you're not buying shit all the time. So good for Andy. Yeah, What's the dumbest thing you bought sure. in retirement? <laughs> oh uh, like you're bored you're like all right let's go that's a great question i i think i'm trying to think of something just outrageous but i'm still pretty good about it the, the thing is when you're when you're retired is you're, you're not around the rink as much right so all of a sudden you, you're finding excuses to spend money on certain things that you believe you need and then in the end you don't need anything but uh i i bought myself a rolex nice um uh, that was right after I retired and uh, I have not purchased anything remotely expensive since like my truck, even my pickup, it's a 2015 it's falling apart right now and I'm going to hang on to it until it can no longer ride. There you go. I like that. Do you have a gaming room? I feel like you might be one of those guys that uh, no, you're still into video games, aren't you? Yeah. I, I game all like tonight I'm gaming because the wife, she's heading out with her friends for dinner or whatever they're getting together. So that's where I rally all the troops first thing in the morning in our group chat. I let them know. Uh, that I'm available tonight and uh, it's set up in our guest bedroom. 
and I sleep in there quite a bit because I'm a bad snorer. So right, okay. right at the the, at the 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 end of the bed, I hung up a TV. I've got my little recliner in the same room, nice. and that's where I do all the gaming. Is that that's the same awesome. group chat that uh, that Carl reminds you that you said that he's going to suck this year? <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> that's another one eric's not online it's just me and the me and some of my degenerate buddies here in ottawa that's, he's in the rolex roll. group chat though i bet oh fuck. yeah <laughs> yeah I, I i almost forgot mentioning the rolex but that was the only rolex or nice watch i ever purchased during my career i needed to make sure get that out there yeah well uh speaking of andy and some of your past teammates uh we, we gotta ask you about Derek Broussard. i mean the ottawa senators nominee for the bill masterton award uh an incredible season for a guy that was brought in on a pto and kind of told right from the get-go hey don't have any expectations here we're we're just gonna have you around as an extra guy and he ends up playing a massive role for this team what can you say about your buddy Brass uh, and this season? And it's just so goddamn unfortunate that uh, he was so close to finishing off the season healthy, and then he has that big injury. Yeah, he's he's um, he's an incredible teammate, right? Like like that's that seems to be whatever. I mean, I don't not that I'm looking for validation from other players. I've played a ton with him. I know him well enough now that you can't hide in this league, right? When you spend enough time around players, you know. People get to know you pretty well, no matter how much you might be trying to hide. And and, and Derek, um, just in, an incredible guy, uh, selfless, uh, you know, cares about his teammates a ton, no matter what the situation that he's in, uh, just wants to win, just wants to contribute and help out his team. So I thought he he filled in fantastic, you know, this season. And I, I think most people would agree. And, and, and I wasn't surprised, you know, I was pushing for him in training camp. I can remember that. And people were, some people were questioning. And I think most people understood that there was a role for him on this team. And, and the beauty of it was, you know, he was playing for peanuts as far as the NHL salaries go. So, yeah. um, you know, great value, uh, great leadership from him. And that's, that to me is, that is invaluable. I mean, if you're looking at all his contributions, never mind his on ice stuff, I think, with a young core that they have guy having guys like him and Giroux, um, just to name a few, um, is huge. It's huge for the growth of the group. Um, uh, cause they just learn the right way. And, um, by, but just by chance, you've got two legitimately really good character guys too. I mean, there's, there are a ton of veterans out there in the NHL, uh, that I would not call bad guys, but maybe don't carry that same leadership, uh, that, that Derek and, and, and Claude do. So anyway, uh, really unfortunate. I talked to him a little bit. Um, he made it really clear and, and I know it's been reported on already, but I've had conversations with him as well. And he, he, he doesn't know what he wants to do yet. He's keeping his options open. Um, I would assume that if there was anywhere he'd want to play, it would be to return in Ottawa. Um, because you know, his girlfriend's from Montreal and she comes by and stays here with him quite a bit here in Ottawa. And it's close to home. His family get to watch him play. He doesn't need to play anymore. I think he just loves the game that much. And I think the ideal scenario for him would be to be here. And he's expressed that. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, you know, up to his health and how he feels. And I, I think the one thing I mentioned to him, having gone through it is don't make any bold decisions too early. Like, like, like you've seen it with Tom Brady, not to try to compare the two, but you know, as, a, as an athlete, right after the grind of a season, it's easy to say, man, I'm done with this. Like, I'm done with it. And then sitting around on your ass for two months ensues and you realize, shit, like I missed the game a ton. So that was my advice to Derek. Just wait until the end of summer or at least toward the end of the summer. I think his counter argument to me was more, you know, I, I, I don't know how badly I want to train my ass off and skate every day without really knowing what's next. Yeah. So I'm sure he's going to want the decision to be made relatively soon. Uh, but I think it's in his benefit to wait at least a little bit. So somewhere in the middle right there. Always respect guys who come back and do it for the love of the game. The guy's made $42 million and he's out there playing right. league minimum exactly. 750 K. Yeah. And I'm not saying he's going out, but if he did, he scored a goal in his final full game in the national yeah. hockey league. So that's a, a nice benefit. good way to go. Obviously a thousand NHL games as well. That's huge meth. I see you got the Dallas stars hat on. Bandwagon time. I know the Sen season winding down. Are we on yep. the Spurs bandwagon? Who are you hoping to see advance in the playoffs? And follow up, we're all Tampa Bay Lightning fans next week, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a given. Um, I think that's the series most people are probably anticipating, at least over here. I know I am. I mean, just curious to see how they fare this year and Tampa being so inconsistent uh, for the most part. And, and I think 
it, it's not, it has nothing to do with coaching. It has nothing to do with anything other than it's an aging core that has played a shitload of hockey over the last three or four seasons. Right. So um, I'm very curious to see how they fare. Uh, the, I think the longer that series will go, the more Tampa benefits from it. Uh, and you saw the way they played that last game the other night. I mean, I love that. You know, the, the more storylines, the more physicality, the more nonsense happening, you know, behind the scenes, I'm all for it. It's going to be very entertaining. Uh, and it's a great way to play against Toronto because you're not going to try to match them, you know, with, with, with rush after rush, you have to get under the skin. Anyway, um, with Dallas, this is more of just a hat that fits my, my big squash. It's very those, funny out now. One of those irresponsible but, purchases that you made, eh? Post yeah, I, this is, this hat was free 99. It's, I was going to say, yeah. Thin. It's a fan hat. I think they were giving away at the games. Anyway, I, I am cheering them on, though. And then, of course, I think my dark horse would be Vegas, only because okay. I want to see Stoney do well. And it's just yep. funny to see all the health, all the the injured guys show up last minute. I think it's Weird. fantastic. I know, I but I love it though. I, I mean, they're just playing the system, right? And then I've got. To, I, I I'm excited to see Edmonton. I, I'd like to see more from them. I think they're finishing strong right now. But to see McDavid and Drysaitel get a good get get a good push here under their belts while they're in their prime, is another team that I'd like to see do well. Just because it's ex- I want to see them in the third round. You know, I want to Big see time. those guys succeed, right? And I think there's opportunity there in the West to make a little noise. And then once you get your foot in the door in that in that in that Stanley Cup final, it doesn't matter. Like anything can happen. So. Uh, between those two teams, obviously Boston's the big dog. Uh, yeah, I don't need to mention that. If they can stay healthy, they'll be the team to beat. Um, and then Jersey with the young core. Kind of curious to see how they fare too. But I'm leaning on Edmonton, Vegas, and uh, and Boston to do well. So out of the hashtag sends abroad that we follow every time the playoffs come around, Ottawa's not in the mix. Like, Is, is Mark Stone the guy who maybe either you keep up the most with or would want to see him win the cup the most? I think so. I think that's fair. Um, you know, no matter how much he's I right joke there up the- in Edmonton too. What's that? Hey, Cody CC Stanley cup champion, maybe with Edmonton. But, but that's the thing. You, you won't find a nicer guy in the game. Oh, right? right. And, and with Stoney, Stoney's so competitive. It's just a competitive guy that just wants to win. Now he needs his back to sort of, he needs his, he needs to sort out his back, make sure it feels good. And he's effective of course. But uh, yeah, man, I mean, no matter how much I've joked around about Vegas and, all the ill will half the time. I'm just having fun and joking around, but um, yeah, I'd like to see them do well. Your just gives team. you, uh, gives you somebody to cheer for. Yeah. Well, they're probably going to play Winnipeg in the first round. I'm going to be boots on the ground. Ooh. My first whiteout big game. matchup. Yeah. Well, to me, the, the last wild card team in both conferences, they've got the X factor. I'd say they each have the best goalie in the entire conference with Sorokin and that's, and with Hellebuck. So it's everything. Yeah. It's everything. I'm telling you. And well, not that I need to tell you guys, you guys watch enough hockey, but if you got a goaltender back there, look at the common denominator in all these teams. A lot of, I mean, most of them, they've got excellent goaltending, right? And yeah. that's, that's carried in with your decor, of course, too. But, but having that consistent back end there with a good goaltender, Ooh, it's a good recipe to have. Hell yeah. Final question for me, Math, and it's not really a question. It's more of a thank you. Like we can't, we can't uh, explain in words and appreciate how much you've done for us this year. And uh, yeah. hopefully we can continue this on in the summer too. You guys, you guys deliver such a great product. I had this conversation with Craig the other day, we were on the phone and, and uh, Craig Medallia and, and, and it's the hustle, right? Like you guys put out so much content and this fan base is so incredibly lucky to have you guys. Cause if ever you're not up to date with anything, there's something that you guys are posting in the next couple of days guaranteed. And uh, I know firsthand how much work is involved and I can't imagine the amount of work you guys put in, but it certainly shows because everything you guys do and talk about is effortless and you do a fantastic job. So it's my pleasure. Thank you. Oh, I, w- I wasn't trying to get our own tires pumped there, but if you had to guess <laughs> how many, it. how many videos we've posted since day one of training camp, what would be your guess? Oh shit, man. I, <laughs> I don't even know don't, this answer. I don't even know. Yeah. Like a lot. And, and, and if you're including your, your YouTube clips or rather your quick little Twitter cuts. Yeah. So that's, in, no, I'm not counting that. I'm just counting on YouTube on YouTube since, since September 18th. <laughs> I was going to say 300. I was going to say 300, but that's 366. Whew. That's very impressive. Yeah. That's a wild. Content. 79 yeah. live streams, 99 shorts and oh. 188 uploads. But no, we I want I want bef- 
I was, I was going to say, Ross, sorry, I mean to cut you off because I know we're running out of time on the little ticker there. Good. What do you guys think they're going to do with Dabrinkit really quickly? I keep having these internal conversations. I know that they're going to, they've qualified him. Yeah. What, what, what like, is he going to sign some kind of bridge deal maybe, or does, does he just take the qualifying offer and run with it? Well, he will he bet on himself. Huh. Huh. I think, I think he'll bet on himself. Yeah. I I've maintained, I think it's best for to bring it and the sense for him to sh- sign a short-term deal. You can't yeah. have eight guys locked up at big numbers because if things start going sideways, you're kind of screwed. And not that I think they will go sideways. I think it's a great core, but I just think you need some flexibility. And I think with Debrinket having kind of a weird season, he's not going to want to go all, all in long-term and the Sens aren't going to want to go all in long-term either. Yeah. But what if he comes back, takes that qualifying offer, comes back and then signs or rather puts up another, maybe 30 goals. Yeah. Then you have a real decision to make. On your yeah. Hands. <laughs> Cause because when Norris comes back, yeah. Josh Norris likes to shoot the puck too. Hell yeah. So, you know, anyway, I was thinking about that. I'm like, cause I see a lot of argument, not arguing, but good discussion online. And I'm always curious. I'm like, I wish I had a crystal ball just to see how this plays out. Cause he's, yeah. he's that one big one. And then with Brandstrom, how do you move forward with him? Like, how do you like, do you, do you give him like a, do you try to take advantage of him right now and give him yeah. like a three year deal at like 2 million per, is that like, you know give what I mean? Like, that's what I do. Give him the two by two. The, the two by two. Uh, I'd go longer. I'd go longer. Yeah. yeah, but then I'm, yeah. yeah. Where's Clevin fit in? Where there's so many great questions that, that I know. So there's your answer. Meth will be back this summer throughout. Yeah, uh, we're well, come open on, this oh, up come on. Time. Okay, come on. Yeah, because they're they're doing the lockout. The locker cleanout day is tomorrow. I'm on 1200 tomorrow, but maybe on like Monday or Tuesday we can have Perfect. like a full breakdown on some of these right. scenarios. Okay, the Ottawa Love Senators it. eulogy with Mark Mathot yep. coming up here. No, we, we appreciate that. And I wasn't looking for a tire yeah. pump. We truly mean it. Out of those 366 videos, I would say your 10 appearances <laughs> are 10 of the 12 most viewed. People love Easy. having your opinions yep. on the show. We appreciate you, and we're looking yep. forward to keeping this up. By the way, and this is a little tease, Pilsy and I are working on getting a setup that we can do live interviews. If we come for dev camp and get some, can we come to the Manatic Mathot Mansion and do a backyard live interview? 100, 100%. Nice. Inviting ourselves over worked, Ross. It worked. No, dude, I'd love that. It'd be fun. And the weather the weather here is prime at that time of year, so I'm all in. And then, I mean, this is pushing it, but we'll get Ellie to come on as a, how being a hockey wife is throughout the years. I feel like. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Hard. I'm sure she'll be thrilled. <laughs> nice. Hey, right. we'll and we can the... rub it in Noodles' face, uh, Ross. Yes. He gets to go to the Manatic Mansion. Yeah, do you hear that? <laughs> Noodles was, was chirp. We were like spoon-feeding him chirps for you. But he's like, yeah, mess never invited me over. He's not, he wouldn't come here even if he was paid to come here. Anyway, that's another <laughs> conversation. I'll have to send him a text. Yeah, do it. We appreciate you so much, man. We can't wait to see you again. Everyone's already following you on Twitter, at MarkMathod3. Thanks for doing this, brother. For Mark Mathod Thanks, guys. and Brandon Pillar. I'm Ross Levitan. This has been the Locked On Senators podcast. It's your team every day.